Hello students, welcome to lecture of kinematics and theory of machine. We are going to continue gear today and topic we will cover in this uh, in this uh, lecture will be uh, lob gearing and forms of teeth. There are two types of form and uh, also comparison is there. So we will cover these two topics today. Let's start. Okay, let's start lob gearing. This is the derivation and this figure and statement uh, we have we will derive this uh, state uh, derivation and uh, we come to this statement but it is very easy it's only have to understand the geometrical relation between two gears and this figure so we are going to step by step okay check this uh, two gears I have taken and uh, their center is O1 and, and O2 we have connected both the center with this line okay so you can see the contact point between these two gear okay let's name it o1 and o2 are uh, center of two of two gears and it uh, they are rotating with omega omega 1 and omega 2 velocity so q is a point contact point now we are making a, a tangent at a contact point so common tangent at a contact surface will be td it is a common tangent and you know that you have already done in eg uh, at a tangent you also can make what normal so it is a tangent and normal at a q q is a contact point between the teeth so now we are making the normal to common normal from o1 and o2 and let's name it m and n so here you can see on a figure that uh, tt is a common tangent and uh, uh, mn is a normal to the surface contact q okay so q is a point which can be considered as a o, uh, o1 one gear 1 and gear 2 both okay so we can connect contact point q to gear 1 and gear so you can see here uh, these two lines means uh, this line uh, QO2 and MN making some angle and same as O1Q and O1M making some angle let's name it M and N okay so alpha and beta so you can see here this angle is a alpha and here second angle is a beta so q is a common point and means q is a moving so velocity of q can be considered with respect to both gear because it is a contact point you can cons consider as a at a on both at a time at a this second okay so uh, so now consider on a gear one so This is the velocity of Q with respect to gear 1, V1. And you can see this, this and here. What will be the angle? What will be here the angle? So I have uh, said in a um, starting it is a totally geometrical relation you have to find if this there is a 90 angle here it is a alpha here so this will be 90 minus alpha and you can see this is a 90 angle so this will be directly alpha okay same angle and same q point we can consider on a o2 velocity will be v2 v2 will be perpendicular to o2 cube okay velocity is always perpendicular to this so same angle will become beta so alpha same angle alpha has become here and beta uh, on gear 2 will be uh, made here so this is the velocity v1 and v2 now makes the here the triangle means we draw the normal line on mn and you can see there is a triangle velocity triangle qed 
वेलोसिटी ट्रायंगल क्यू ई टी ओके सो फर्स्ट यू कैन सी वी वन कॉस अल्फा वी टू कॉस बीटा नाउ यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द वी वन वी वन इज अ वेलोसिटी सो फॉर दैट आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन इट इफ एनी लिंक if any link like consider this this is the a and this is the b if ab link is rotating in this direction and we have to find the velocity of velocity of b what will be velocity of b means we have to find the v1 and it has a angular velocity omega 1 so remember that always linear velocity v1 is equal to will be angular velocity omega into distance between this point reference point and point for which you are finding the velocity a okay so linear velocity is equal to omega ab but in our case what will happen v1 means velocity v1 what will be the velocity v1 is equal to angular velocity angular velocity omega into distance this distance so check this out omega into o1 q cos alpha and same as for v2 velocity v2 velocity is equal to angular velocity of that gear and from o2 to that point distance of this point means this okay so this is the o2 omega 2 into o2 q so next what is the cos alpha and cos beta you can consider this triangle check this i am giving you some hint so you can find this triangle o1 mq and there is a alpha if you see that cos alpha here cos alpha find the cos alpha and same as triangle you can see o2 q n and here you can see this is the angle here this beta angle so you have to find again cos beta so o1 into o1 q into cos alpha will be become o1 m upon o1 q and so here o1 q o1 q will be eliminated and remain o1 in uh, into o1m and o2 into o2n so here the final result omega 1 upon omega 2 is equal to o2n upon o1m so if you want the omega 1 upon omega 2 constant means constant angular ratio so what you need to make constant o2n upon o1m right now see the o2n means which distance you can see o2n means this distance okay and o1m is a this distance and you can't make sure that with this distance this ratio will be always be constant so if you want to um derive there is a in gear for constant ratio check this um we have to consider pitch point because pitch point is a you can see in figure right now pitch point here this is a point between uh, point of contact of pitch circles which is always remain at a steady place at a point of contact so this is the common normal v2 
which intersecting the two center lines and we have considered as a that pitch point right now okay so what will happen if you consider this triangle this triangle triangle number 1 is a o1 mp and triangle number 2 o1 m q as this both uh, in both uh, triangle two sides are common so as a similar triangle uh, rule you can say that the o2n upon o1m is equal to o2p upon o1 okay so you have derived the final statement o1 upon o2 is equal to o2n upon o1m is equal to o2p upon o1p so i am explaining why we have to this is okay up to this point why we have um, introduced the pitch point here because pitch point is a uh, that point will remain at the same place so if you want to prove that okay, this ratio will remain or uh, remain always constant we introduce the pitch point and uh, find that relation okay so now time to statement of the law of gearing so this is the law uh, statement for the law of gearing okay now we are going to the statement on statement so check this the common normal at a point of contact between the pair of teeth must always pass through the pitch point you can see common normal okay common this is a common normal this common normal must pass through always from the this pitch point here otherwise you can't say omega 1 upon omega 2 will remain constant this ratio remain constant because it pass through the pitch point p and we have derived that here o2p upon o1p so if p point will be here uh, and if normal normal pass through the pitch point you can say that this ratio will remain constant and gear will give constant velocity ratio so remember that common normal at a point of contact must pass through the pitch point let's see let's learn this by animation okay you can see here first of all you have to understand where is the pitch point check this you can see here it is a pitch point how you can know where is a pitch point check this when this is the pitch circle of gear o1 this is the pitch circle of gear o2 okay all points are moving but pitch point pitch point is a contact point between the two pitch circle it will remain always here it is not moving it it is the point of contact between the pitch circle so common normal always must pass through the pitch point means gear is moving point of contact between two the teeth is a moving but normal is you can see always pass through the pitch point and the statement for the law of gearing is the common normal at a point of contact between the pair always must pass through the pitch point and it is okay that's it for the law of gearing and we are going to move the next uh, point it is a form of teeth there are two types of teeth mostly cyclodal and involute so first check the cyclodal you already uh, seen this cyclodal type profile also in eg uh, remember um, try to memorize that what is cyclodal in cyclodal you know that the cylindrical part rotating on a straight surface and uh, if you locate the point it make the curve it is known as a cyclodal curve and if cylindrical part move along the any circular part then makes it a epicycloid and if it is a inside of that circle it is a hypo hypocycloid so this is the epicycloid and this is a hypocycloid and 
using that uh, that profile using this profile you manufacturing the if you designing the teeth then it is known as a cycloidal teeth you can see here one circle is make and when this circle is rotating you got this this portion only and same as uh, in bottom at the peach circle you making a uh, rotating another circle and due to that rotation you got this part and same as at this point this circle will rotate opposite direction and if you rotate total curvature is that but you use only up to this point so like this is epicycloid this is epicycloid and these bottom parts are hypocycloid and that's how we get the profile for the cycloidal teeth involute teeth you also uh, learn this uh, profile in a uh, eg involute curve you know that if any string is uh, uh, put it around this any circular and we open this string this curve we get and getting this curve from this curve if we making any profile then it is for gear it is known as a involute okay so check this out from this curve you are using one side of teeth and this is the top line and again same but you can say a mirror type you again getting another curve from this side like in this figure you have seen already that this is first curve and if you making the second curve in from this form in that direction and make the land here so you can get the teeth here this is the profile for the teeth okay so it is a involute teeth 